All the zoning board meeting will now be recorded. 17th of 2023 to order. And the first case is case 23-01, uh, Cobella Enterprises. Hope I'm saying that right. Bear with me. I guess I'm the guinea pig for the new equipment you, tonight. Yeah, yes, you are. Especially. <laughs> If you need me to zoom in on anything as I go, just, just please tell me. Uh, so, good evening, everyone. My name is Chris Rice with TF Moran. I'm here uh, on behalf of Colbea Enterprises uh, Incorporated. Um, they're a 60 year old family run business. They have approximately 110 locations throughout New Hampshire, Massachusetts, and Rhode Island. Uh, with me this evening is Attorney John Cronin uh, from Cronin, Bisson, and Zielinski. Uh, the Colbia's director of uh, construction and maintenance apologizes for not being able to be here personally. He had a family matter to attend to, but if there's anything that comes up, I'm able to call him on cell or text him to try to get some answers if the need arises. Uh, I've handed out some packets for you, your use. It'll be the same thing that I show up on the screen here. Uh, it includes a copy of the existing conditions plan, a copy of the proposed site plan. That's the colored plan that you have. Uh, two ZBA plan exhibits uh, that kind of detail the requested relief, and I'll run through those. Uh, Pylon sign plan, which shows the existing versus the proposed pylon that's on site, and overall signage plan and some photos of the recently completed Nashville location, which will give you an idea on what their facility looks like. Uh, the subject parcel is tax map 23, lot 8-2, which is located at 63 Laconia Road. It's adjacent to the Tilton Diner, which is located right here. Uh, it's located within the Regional Commercial Zoning District. The existing site's approximately 1.75 acres in size and currently contains an existing gas station located here. And there is a co-tenant inside that gas station, which is currently Subway Sandwiches. Uh, the existing building is approximately 2,650 square feet. And there are four existing fueling uh, dispenser islands for a total of eight uh, fueling stations on the property. The property is abutted uh, by Laconia Road. Uh, to the north, Walgreens is across the street. Uh, to the east over here is the Hobby Lobby, Applebee's, and uh, Staples Plaza. Uh, to the south is the plaza with the Dunkin' Donuts Chinese restaurant and the pizza shop, I believe. And then to the uh, west is the Tilton Diner. So the proposed project is to demolish uh, basically everything that you see on site. And the site layout is intended to look somewhat like what you see here. Uh, the new building is approximately 5,000 square feet. It has six dispenser islands for a total of 12 uh, fueling stations. Uh, this existing, this curb cut got a little wider right here by about 93 square feet, which I'll show on another plan. And then this curb cut here was uh, shrunk up to help uh, direct the traffic and make we reduce some of the pavement on site that wasn't needed. Uh, there's no wetland impacts as part of this project. And we're here tonight for uh, three variance requests uh, for the pro proposed redevelopment. Uh, Number one is Article 6, Section 4.3, to permit pavement, catch basins, uh, pavement, catch basins, uh, some decorative bollards, and a pylon sign within the setback areas. So the red area here uh, represents the pavement that's within the setback area. Most of this is existing. Uh, there is, a, I believe, 1,858 square feet total shown in red here. The proposed, um, sorry, existing is 1,756. The new is 1,858. So there's about 72 square feet of new pavement within the setback, which, depending on where you are along the setback line, really equates to six inches to one, one foot of additional pavement along this side. And then the other area is just in the front location here where we've just put a little sliver in to help with the truck movements and fire truck movements exiting the site. There is existing impervious in this area and this area of the setbacks that we have removed. There's an overall reduction, but the grand total of new that you see in red is 165 square feet. Uh, we also have decorative bollards that are shown on the plan on the setback area. There's five of them here. One, two, three, four, five. Uh, they're spaced 24 feet apart. Uh, they're approximately three and a half feet tall, only a foot and a half in diameter, and you can see pictures the, of them in the photos that I attached to the back of your package just to get a visual idea. They're really just for uh, aesthetic purposes. They're about two and a half feet into the setback in this location. Uh, we are also proposing the pylon sign within the front setback area. The existing sign you can see is in this location here. 
Uh, we're actually pushing the sign a little bit further into the site by about two and a half feet and it's shifting five feet to the west and overall and i'll get into this in a moment but overall the sign height is coming down and the square footage is being reduced from what's existing but it still exceeds what's permitted by the zoning ordinance and then the balloon notations on the plan which are a little further up here that you're looking at this just represents uh, the, the proposed drainage structures that would be underground but within the setback area the reason they're in this location is because this is the lowest elevation on the property so that's where we think that the outlet's going to have to be while we're not done with the final drainage design we anticipate that this would be what would be required it would be mostly underneath the pavement um, and we'll be going to the conservation commission for the conditional use permit to allow some work within the buffer there will be no wetland impacts but we're trying to provide some stormwater treatment on the property because none currently exists most of the stormwater just sheets off right into the gulf brook or sheets off into the main access drive and further down the road our intent is to capture it pre-treat it treat it detain it and release it uh, and that'll all be reviewed by the town engineer as we get to that stage um, i think that covers everything for structures within the setback the second variance request is from article 2 section 2.4.4 m which is to allow parking lots on past 11 pm the owner would like given their location proximity to the uh, highway to have the ability to be open 24 hours so with that they'd like to have lighting on during their operating hours to provide safety and lighting for their customers and the third variance request is from article 2 section 2.3 to allow a 26 foot 3 inch sign height um, and 134 square feet to replace the existing pylon the existing pylon is 29 feet tall with a sign area of approximately 151.2 square feet so we're reducing the square footage so I'm sorry by 17.2 square feet or approximately 11 percent and the height's coming down by 2.8 feet essentially from what exists I can zoom out more that. but that's uh, on the left is the proposed sign on the right is what currently exists it's difficult to see from this that they're getting smaller but it's by the values that I that I provided and then I also had just some pictures of the facility. This is what was recently constructed in Nashville. I believe they opened in March of this past year. Uh, but they do they do take pride in their facilities and their operations. That's just a different view of the site. Um, we appreciate your consideration of these matters. I'll turn it over to Attorney John Cronin, and then uh, we'll be happy to answer any questions or comments you may have. Thank you. <clears throat> Good evening, Mr. Chair, members of the board. Uh, for the record, John Cronin, uh, Cronin, Vissa, and Zelensky. Chris and I has also worked with uh, Kobe on doing a project that's currently under construction and books it, required some variance, and of course, planning board review, but it's similar in style and configuration than the one that you uh, saw in uh, Nashua. Uh, just to address uh, the five criteria, if you will, I'll address the five of them comprehensively and touch on each one of the three pieces. Uh, when I looked at this one initially, my first uh, question to Chris was, uh, you know, this is uh, interesting because generally an ordinance doesn't apply to existing non-conforming uses. But when you modify it, that gets to be a gray area. And uh, to, to go on the, the path of caution, rather than get into a debate, we said, fine, we'll file an application and, and proceed. Uh, and we are making modifications to the pavement and various things, even though there's a total net reduction uh, the locations of where it encroaches is a little bit different. Uh, likewise, with the sign, uh, you're getting a reduction in size, but we are moving it, so technically it would trigger. But if you kept it in the same place, you'd have a larger sign, a larger obstacle, uh, and you just keep it there. So uh, the goal of this whole operation here is to change the configuration. I'm sure you've been by that site many times. The actual C store and subway is kind of an odd configuration facing west. There's really no definition within the parking lot for vehicles. They come in on the front entrance, they come in by the Dunkin' Donuts, and it's even open down in the back corner where the electric charging stations are. So from a safety perspective, uh, this definition uh, will make it a lot better for traffic movements and design around the site. When you look at the spirit and intent and the public interest prong, the leading authority on that is a case of Farrar versus Keene. You've probably heard about that a number of times. And they say the standard to establish that is that you have to demonstrate that if the variance is granted, it will not in a marked or substantial way change the essential character of the neighborhood. Well, the good news here is we're in a heavy commercial area. 
really, I think the, the residents, closest residents may be close to a mile away. <clears throat> You're very close to the interchange, the Cloverleaf for 93, which is a busy, robust area and commercial all about you. Also, the use really isn't changing. You know, we're changing the way it looks, changing the way it feels, improving and modernizing it. But the essential character of the neighborhood will stay exactly the way it is. So we believe we follow Ferrar on those points and, and meet that standard. The next test is the, the balancing test, the substantial justice, which the Supreme Court hasn't figured out a bright line test on that and said it's a, you know, it, it's kind of, you got to weigh it and see what the impact would be to the community versus the, the impact to the applicant if these variances were denied. Uh, certainly if they're denied, it stunts the possibility of going forward with the, the design as contemplated. You probably could do some things within the site that wouldn't require a variance. Uh, but what you will get here from a public point of view in, on that balancing test, you get better traffic circulation, better safety, modern you know, state-of-the-art equipment, uh, both at the pumps and below ground for storage tanks, uh, which uh, you know everybody wants that for environmental uh, peace of mind. So that'll all happen. Plus, you're going to get an accelerated tax base. I can't tell you what uh, that will be, but I'm sure once this is built and an occupancy permit is issued, your assessor will take a trip out and bring uh, the value up to speed, which should generate more burden-free tax dollars for the community. <clears throat> this site won't be sending kids to school. Uh, generally uh, low call, it's got all the fire protection and, and NFPA standards, so it's not a burden on fire or police. Uh, so, And then the harm to the public, if you had residences around, I think that would be a harder call, uh, but where it's situated in a commercial environment, we think we uh, meet that test. Uh, the next one is if the variances are granted, will the surrounding property values be diminished? Uh, I think it's pretty apparent that they would not. It's certainly an improvement to an existing use that's essentially going to say that stay the same. As we typically do, we asked a professional to take a look at the plan, uh, take a look at the site, try and get a sense of where the, uh, the homes are, whether there'd be any impacts, particularly with the 24-hour request, which the applicant would like to do it. They're not sure if that will be year-round or maybe during the peak season, which I know having uh, driven up and down 93 late at night, sometimes it's a challenge to find gas, and uh, it's nice to know that there'd be a place to get it if you're uh, running on fumes, if you will. But we asked uh, Callie Milney from Kinteris Real Estate. She's a former member of the Real Estate Commission uh, to do an analysis. She's provided a report to us stating in her professional opinion uh, that there'd be no diminution of surrounding property values because the distance to residences is so far and this will be an improvement to the adjacent commercial sites. Mm -hmm. The final piece is the, uh, and, and I'm happy to hand this in, the, the hardship standard. And uh, you know, after Simplex and Bochia, or in those cases, we've come to a, a more reasonable standard. Where, is there a fair <clears throat> and adequate application of the existing ordinance to this property? Where it's an already built out property, it's essentially staying the same. It's already non-conforming to say, hey, you've already got this site, make it con conform expressly. We don't think that's a fair relationship really between what the ordinance is trying to accomplish in this particular property. And then the final piece of that is the use of reasonable one. Well, it's demonstrated by its existence for many, many years that it's a reasonable use, provides a public service for both convenience and, and fueling. And uh, uh, we think we cover that ground as well. So that's uh, the five criteria. Uh, that we've addressed. I'm happy to expand on any one of the points if you wish or to entertain any questions that you might have. I have a question. Are you keeping the flagpole there? I'm going to defer to the engineer on that one. We haven't finished the exact site design. If we can keep it in place, we will. If it has to be relocated, it doesn't make sense because I don't believe that the existing pole is suitable to relocate and, and keep without having to replace everything. But uh, our intent is to try to keep it if possible in the location that it is. Okay, and how about the entrance and the exit? Is, is, is there's a stop sign there right now, correct? Uh, I don't believe is I don't believe there's an existing stop sign in that location. Check the plan. Probably a stop sign onto Laconia Road. There is a stop sign on Laconia Road. I don't believe that there's one here existing coming out of the site or up here. This existing curb cut is more in this location out here. So uh -huh. it's very wide in the back. Okay. The front one we kept pretty much the same. We just had a little sliver here that we widened just to help with the truck movement. So movements. where would they be entering and exiting from the gas station? Uh, they can enter or exit anywhere along here or 
the back. This is one way in though. This is not exit. So this is a one way circulation around. Okay. And we did, uh, I did send this and coordinate this with the fire department. They reviewed and approved the, the layout as it is for their, for their purposes. Okay. Thank you. What, what kind of lighting are you proposing and how many lighting poles are you proposing? You know, my concern is, you know, you're talking about 24 hours and we're talking, let's say one o'clock at night, is this going to be lit, lit up insanely? Are no, we talking no. after 11, you'll go half power? What are we talking? We, we could probably look at reduced lighting. We'd want to still meet safety factors. Correct. I think on the last sites we've done, I think they average 18 feet tall, roughly from ground to the mounting height. And we have a 15 foot. So their lighting design would have to meet that requirement in this, in this particular lighting? case. All shielded downlit. Um, and we'll provide a lighting plan to planning if we, if we get to that stage. I just have one uh, kind of correction. You mentioned that the height um, was going to be 26 and it existing was 29. In your filing, it says 26. The existing says 26. Just wanted to make sure. So. You're not decreasing the height. Is we are not increasing the height. Decreasing. We are decreasing the height. The existing is 29 feet. We're going to 26 feet, three inches. The paperwork says 26. So I just. Yes, we're going to 26 feet, three inches. The existing is 29 feet tall. So, so it's wrong. In here. Yeah, it must be a typo. Okay, that. okay, that's all right. Just so we know. So it's was it's 29 now. Yes, it is reducing in height by about 2.8 feet, and okay. reducing by about 17.2 square feet signage area. The pictures that you referenced uh, from the Nashua, is that the same building you're building? Obviously, there are. it looks like there's way more gas pumps than this site's going to have. But is it the same basic building? This is a different type, style, uh, style canopy. This is all in one row going down. So I, I believe they have, one, two, three, they have six five. pumps. So they have, it's the same number of fueling dispensers, but it's basically a, a box instead of a rectangle on, on this property. Okay. So the canopy would be different. The building would be the same. It's the same building. Yeah. And when I say these, the canopy is different, it's the same style, colors, and such, but right, instead right. of being a rectangular with six pumps all in a row, it's two rows of three. Right, okay. The one that you just saw has six in a row right. lengthwise. It's a much it's longer canopy one. that's a little bit longer in the building, I believe. Oh, okay. So each one of these oval shapes is two pumps. One on each side, one correct. Each side. Yes. Right. Yeah. Okay. So they call it a dispenser and then a fueling station. So there's six dispensers, 12 total fueling stations, if you will. Yep. And then these, no, go ahead, Brian. No, no, stop there. These lighted ballers that are, they are just over the, the setback there. Yes. Is that just, are you, are you minimum distances on these um, bi-directional flow between the parking spots and the Yes, we've Pumps scrunched themselves. everything kind of as much as we can to accommodate the bypass lanes, the fire truck lane that they need, and the travel safe maneuvering distances around the pumps and the canopy. Uh, these don't emit a lot of light at all. They're really kind of like an LED, just little decorative light. No, just asking if, you know, you could have squished the the lot back. You know, I mean, I don't know what the exact dimension yeah, is. Yeah, we reduced everything as much as we can. Um, I believe our impervious, we did reduce overall impervious on the site by about, Five percent, I believe it was. I can give you the exact in a second. Uh, it's it's right here. It's like sixty six to sixty two. It's yeah, sixty sixty eight per sixty eight point sixty six point eight to sixty six point eight to sixty two point something. Eight thousand to forty seven thousand. The green area uh, facing going towards the diner are those bollards or are those uh, this green area here? Yeah, you got circles on this print. Those there. are trees. Those are just landscape yeah. trees. The circles within this island. This is all green space. Well, the one I'm looking at's got the little circles like the ballards in the front. The print I'm looking at here. Oh, right. Uh, those are also lighted ballards, but those right, I believe we back. didn't need to request a, a setback from along the side setback. It just had to do with the front setback based on what we were directing. Yeah. So they do have some additional lighted ballards. It's really just going around the loop of their property. Yeah. Yep. But I apologize, I didn't point that out earlier. And the, the white areas that you're looking at really just represent concrete on the property. There's concrete up, uh, for the fueling tank area, the dumpster pad, and then their front parking spaces are typically concrete. And is the property now 24 hour? I don't believe that it is. Okay. I believe it's uh, 5 a.m. to 11 p.m. I, I would have to double check that for you, but I, I, think right. I believe it's 5 a.m. to 11 p.m. currently. And the road going into the diner and going beyond to the plaza behind you and to Franklin Savings Bank, is that it looks what I see here? Your property is about half that road. Yes, it's a it's a shared access. Will that it, it right now? It's not very. It, 
is there going to be any definition or a line, a center line going so people have a better direction? You know what I'm saying? As you pull in the property where that island is yeah. off Laconia Road, right, right now it's like, do I go this way through mm-hmm. the, the gas station? Do I go this way through the diner? And so I didn't know if there was going to be any center line going down. We could look to strike something potentially if that's what you're looking for. That's, I don't yeah. think that the width is there to put in like a, a boulevard island the whole way. But... Oh, no, no, I'm not talking about that, but just some sort of a center line that even if there was arrows, I don't know. You got arrows here. Are, you, are these going to be painted arrows or are you just showing on the print here? Uh, those are painted arrows on, on site. Right. So if there was some of those painted arrows in that. I don't know what they have in this picture of the National. Right. It's just that when you pull into that property now, you don't know which way to go. Right. We could definitely look into it. I'll just have to make sure that there's no restrictions to what people can and can't do because it's a yeah. shared access drive. It's a shared access. We might be able to put in a striped line or at least some directional flow arrows or some signage or some signage. And we can take that suggestion to the planning board because yeah. that would be really yep. for them to look at. Okay. All right. And there's an island now, isn't there, on the entrance? Yes, there is. Yep. It, uh, it goes just beyond the Tilton Diner entrance. Mm-hmm. And then again, we have shrunk this one up considerably to help define it more lines up now almost exactly with what's back here, where right. now it's really open right here. And it's now one way. I'm not sure if the existing is one way off the top of my head, but it's, it's pretty all open pavement there. This helps give some definition, at least around the site. Um, and there's an existing pavement that we've pulled in from this area and in this area, which is in close proximity to the Dark Brook. But we feel overall it'll be a, a nice improvement to the property. Mm-hmm. Leanne, just as a matter of, uh, I guess, procedure, do they need to read each? They should read it, and I think you, I think they experience? should, and I think I think they should for the record, and I think you should take them one at a time. Yeah, uh, yes, I was going to do them one at a time. I just didn't know if we needed to have them read each five. I mean, it's okay. I think it'll be clearer for you rather than you all sit here and reading the response for each criteria, yeah. right? Okay. Um, and I just wanted to, um, for Mr. Cronin, on the um, sign, I understand that it's grandfathered, but we do have a specification in our ordinance that if it is moved, it must conform. So just so you know that, and Chris and I discussed all all these. Uh, yeah, we have no issue. And I think yeah. I mentioned that once you move it, you kind of lose your Pictures that are replaced or relocated must come into full compliance. So. So would you like me to read the entire application for each of the? Yeah, three, it's kind of been our, our a, a history of, of a thing we've been doing. And you can do them one at a time, and then debate them, and then make and a ruling a, on them, and if you want, or allows um, for a little better clarification. Okay, I'll start term. with uh, Article Six, Section Four Point Three of the Zoning Ordinance to permit, or Article Four, excuse me, Section Four Point Three of the Zoning Ordinance to permit the following structures in the setback areas: pavement catch basins, drainage pipes, lighted decorative bollards, uh, <clears throat> say gas station sign replaces an existing larger sign. The applicant requests the variance to allow structures in the setback area, 63 Laconia Road. The property is located in the regional commercial district, RG as defined in the Tilton zoning ordinance, the ordinance. And in the RG, a 20 foot minimum lot setback is required in the rear a minimum 30 foot setback in the front and a minimum 20 foot setback on the sides. <clears throat> the structures in the setback areas on the property will be pavement, catch basins and drainage pipes, a pylon sign and lighted decorative bollards. These structures will be located in different locations in front, rear and or side setback areas. The proposed area of pavement and curbing in the setback will be 1,951 square feet. Currently, the area of the property with paving and curbing in the setback area is 1,786 square feet, and most of the new paving and curbing will take the place of existing paving and curbing. Only 165 square feet of green area will be developed with pavement and curbing. The project, as proposed, will decrease the total impervious area from 50,953 square feet to 47,406 square feet, which reduces the total percentage from 66.8% to 62.2%. The project also includes five decorative bollards in the front setback. The bollards are one and a half, 
feet in diameter and will be 24 feet apart. The barge will be placed two and a half feet from the curb and 27 and a half feet from the property line. Number one, granting the variance would not be contrary to the public interest because the proposed variance to build structures and the setbacks will not be contrary to the public interest because a large portion of the new structures will simply replace older structures. Removing the existing deteriorated pavement and replacing it with new pavement will improve the overall appearance of the property. The replacement of the pavement will only replace 165 square feet of existing green space. The catch basins and drainage pipes will improve the area by ensuring drainage will be properly managed and not harm abutting properties or be a danger to the public. The decorative bollards will add a decorative element to the gas station to enhance the curb appeal of the property and will add lighting that is not overly bright. Overall, the proposed new structures will reduce the total impervious area on the property by more than 4%. A reduction in impervious area helps the public and the environment by providing more natural drainage buffers, more green space, and reduce risks associated with water runoff. If the variance were granted, the spirit of the ordinance would be observed because the purpose of the ordinance is to promote health, safety, and general welfare. The proposed variance does not conflict with any of these goals. There is currently a gas station at the location, meaning uh, vehicular traffic will likely see no increase. The improved drainage and decreased impervious surface areas will likely help sewage and other town infrastructure. The proposed changes under the variance are in line with the purpose of the RG zone because the changes will help the existing retail and service gas station by improving traffic flow. The proposed variance will not affect the safe and orderly development of the area because it will include minimal additions that will improve the area with more drainage and a large portion of the work to be done will be to improve and update the already existing concrete structures. Three, granting the variance would do substantial justice because substantial justice is measured by whether the harm to the applicant outweighs any gain to the general public if the variance is denied. The public would receive no benefit from denying this variance because the proposed work will simply improve what already exists and will add additional drainage and decorative structures. Removing and replacing the existing concrete will improve the overall look of the property and the additional pavement will not have a substantial impact on the area around the property. The new drainage will help prevent water related issues and decreasing the impervious areas will help reduce runoff issues. The decorative bollards will increase the curb appeal and add light. The applicant will benefit greatly from the new and improved pavement areas because the property will be easier to drive through. The bollage and sign will help attract customers and the drainage will help ensure that there are no water related issues. Overall, the applicant will benefit greatly from the improvements in the property, which will also benefit the general public. The variance is granted the values of the surrounding properties would not be diminished because the current uh, property is currently used as a gas station and the use will not change. The property is currently in need of repairs and approving this variance will allow these repairs to take place. All of the repairs will benefit the applicant and the abutters. New pavement, less impervious area, and new drainage will benefit the abutters through the improved appearance of the property and added precautions against issues such as water issues that would negatively impact the applicant and the abutters. The bollards and new sign will help potential customers find the gas station on the property easier, which could also mean the same customers visit the abutting businesses. Most of the area where the structures and the setback are requested are places where structures already exist meaning the only change will be structures that are newer and improved than what is there currently. Unnecessary hardship owing to a special condition of the property that distinguish it from other properties in the area. Denial of the variance would result in unnecessary hardship because no fair and substantial relationship exists between the general public purposes of the ordinance provision and the specific application of that provision to the property because the property is a commercial space in the RG and currently has structures and setback areas. The RG's purpose is to have a shopping center near the highway for easy access to Tilton businesses. All of the proposed work on the property under this variance will make the property safer for those shopping and the increased drainage will help the butters. The ordinance regulates development to ensure it does not interfere with the butters or danger to community. Because the structures in the setback areas will replace existing structures, add drainage and add structures to make the property more aesthetically pleasing, the abutters and general public will not be negatively affected and the proposed work will improve the property. 
and two, the proposed use is reasonable one because the property is currently improved as a gas station set up in a certain way to allow for easy access to the store and gas pumps. Currently, there are structures in the setback areas which not ne negatively affect the abutters or the general public. Keeping the same footprint with few additions proposed will ensure the property is used in the most efficient manner. That's that one. Thank you. We'll just read them all on the record if you don't mind. You want Unless to you wanna... Oh, you got to. I thought we were going to take a moment of time. Oh, it's you up to you. It's however you, however you guys want to do it. He probably wants a break from reading. Yes. Yeah. So. Mm -hmm. Okay. Sounds good. That way you keep them clear in your yeah. head. Yep. Um, any other questions for them? No. On, on the first variance. Any public input? All right. We will close public input and deliberate. Any initial thoughts from anyone? No. No. I mean, my initial thought is there's nothing in here. Just to actually, I do have a question. This is moving your sign five feet back away from the road, correct? Is that what that's no, doing? No, it's actually it's five feet uh, this way to the left. Oh, okay. And two okay. and a half feet that way. Back. Back. Okay. Side, okay. Away from the road. So it's, it's, you're moving it more in conformance with the setback. Correct. I mean, for the most part here, aside from from this, mm -hmm. the changes are are more conforming changes. Mm -hmm. I have no question. It's the same yeah. use. It, yeah. yeah. I no. can't see any major no. major red flags here that I can find. The flagpole can't be any higher than what it is now, though. They decide to keep it, correct? I have absolutely no idea. Oh. <laughs> that doesn't fall That's, in That here. doesn't fall in here. It's okay. within there. Okay. It's not, they're not asking to put the flagpole in the setback, right? Well, he doesn't know if he's going to keep it yet. I would imagine if he has to put it in a setback, flagpole. so it'll come to the band. That's not the flagpole height or, or setback. Is the flagpole just going to stay? That's the question. I'm going to try to keep it if we can, but I, I have to look at the plan to see if it's in the same. Interferes. Yeah. Where is it right now? Right next to the sign. Look at the oh. picture of the. Well, I would imagine if he changes it at all, he'll need a variance. Okay. It will not be performing. Am I correct on that? If he's in a setback or, yeah. Yeah. So Sounds like we, we might remove us that now in the way. It's very, very close. I, I wouldn't think so. I'll have to really superimpose the plan. It falls right about here. So it may be going Island away. Will, um, we'll take a photo. Yes. That piece, right? Just that piece. And, and then when you're just making that statement, like right, it's all we, we say that, line. we say that, that piece. And right. Right. Yeah. 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 Right. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. I think just if you make any changes, he needs to get a zoning yeah. variance, right? Higher. If, it's, higher yeah. if it's not, if it falls in the setback. Right. If it falls in the setback. Yeah. Okay. Um, okay. Do we have a motion? I want to make a motion to accept. Unless you, oh, do you guys want to go through all five ourselves? No. 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 <laughs> do we need to? You should, you should just review each one and make sure that you don't have to discuss them all, but okay. you should recognize uh, that granting you... Granting the variance would not be contrary to the public interest. I don't believe so, like we spoke earlier. This is really, with the exception of the slightly increased area, it, it's actually making all of the existing stuff more conforming. Mm -hmm. No use is changing. We're doing the same exact thing with it. Okay. Yep. None of the changes make it worse for the public interest. In fact, it increases the flow pattern in there. Mm -hmm. If the variance are granted, the spirit of the ordinance would be observed. Again, same thing. They're mm -hmm. maintaining all the stuff that they're doing, mm -hmm. making it more conforming. Granting this variance would do substantial justice. I come back to the same thing. Mm -hmm. If we denied it, they would still be not in, in conformance. They'd be worse in conformance. If the variance is granted, the values of the surrounding properties would not be diminished. It's all businesses around business. there. It's all commercial. Yeah. Right. Unnecessary hardship, owing to a special condition of the property that distinguishes from other properties in the area, denial of the variance would result in unnecessary hardship because no fair and substantial relationship exists between the general public purposes of the provision of the ordinance provision and the specific application of that provision to the property. Uh, and number two, or if you can't find number one, number two, the proposed use is a reasonable one. I think we don't even have to dive too far into I, the proposed use here is, is reasonable. Yeah. Doing the same thing same they did. Thing. Okay. Mm -hmm. yep. Any motions? I make a motion to approve case ZB23-01. 
uh, a request for a variance from Article 6, Section 4-3 to permit pavement, catch basin, drainage pipes, lighting, decorative bollards, um, and sign in the setback area. I'll second that motion. Right. Made and seconded. Any discussion? No. No. Those in favor? Aye. Aye. Those opposed? The first variance passes. All right. On to the second one. Ready for round two. Here we round go. Two. Yes. Round two. The applicant requests relief from Article 2, Section 2.4.4, subsection M of the Tilton Zoning Ordinance to allow the applicant to keep the parking lot lights on past 11 p.m. on the property. The applicant requests the variance to allow the parking lot of 63 Laconia Road, the property to remain illuminated past 11 p.m. The applicant would like to keep the convenience store and gas pumps located on the pro property open for 24 hours. Granting the variance would not be contrary to the public interest because the applicant requests the variance to illuminate the property's parking lot because it will make it safer for customers who visit the property when it is dark. The location of the property close to the highway makes an ideal location for truck drivers and other transport drivers to stop when they need food or drink or gas. The area is commercial and the abutting property will be negatively impacted. An illuminated parking lot will make the parking lot safer and easier to use. Although some lighting is allowed under the ordinance for outdoor areas, the applicant would like extra light because the property will have people walking and driving on it. The applicant hopes to do everything possible to avoid accidents. Two, if the variance were granted, the spirit of the ordinance would be observed because the purpose of the ordinance outdoor lighting rules is to improve nighttime public safety and security to promote energy efficiency, to reduce lighting, which is detrimental to the environment or to public use and enjoyment of public and private property, and to preserve and promote the historic character of Tilton. Because the applicant would like the ability to keep the property open for 24 hours, it would be safer to keep the parking lot lights on for the safety of customers. Customers need to see where they are walking and what is around them or who is around them. Drivers need the ability to see pedestrians and other potential hazards in the parking lot. The lights will have a minimal impact on the environment because they will only be on when it's dark and the property is open to the public. The abutting properties are all commercial in nature and either require lights if they are open or not be bothered by the lights because they will be closed. The gas station and lights will not change the character of the RG and Tilton will not be negatively impacted by the lights. Granting the variance would do substantial justice because substantial justice is measured by whether the harm to the applicant outweighs any gain to the general public if the variance is denied. The applicant requests to eliminate the parking of uh, the parking of the property so that the customers who need food or drink or gas may shop at the property safely. Not allowing the lights to stay on will make it unsafe to shop in the property. The mix of people walking in the parking lot and those driving could be dangerous without proper lighting. General public is not harmed by the lights. The abutters are commercial properties that would either need their own lights or be closed at the time. No residential properties are close by and the lights are not a danger to drivers on the road. Not allowing the lights would deprive people who work late at night to find food, drink, or gas. If the variance were granted, the values of surrounding properties would not be diminished because allowing the parking lot lights to stay on around 11 p.m. would not negatively impact the surrounding properties. The property will stay a gas station and convenience store. The lights will not impact the other businesses in the area because many will be closed after 11 p.m. And if any are open, the lights will not cause glare or other hazards. The lights only illuminate the property parking lot and do not go far beyond that area. Unnecessary hardship owing to the special condition of the property that distinguish it from other properties in the area. Denial of the variance would result in unnecessary hardship because no fair and substantial relationship exists between the general public purposes of the ordinance provision and the specific, specific application of that provision to the property because the property is a commercial property in a commercial zone. The purpose of the ordinance is to reduce light nuisances and promote safety. The lights will not affect nearby properties because they're all businesses and many will be closed. For any open business, the lights may attract customers who would need something else beyond what the applicant's business can provide. Safety would be promoted by the lights because people will be in the area to see where they are working walking and people may also be able to see other people in the area. The area of the RG where the property is located will not be negatively affected as other zones may be. So the ordinance does not need a stringent application in the RG. And the proposed use is a reasonable one because many gas stations throughout the state 
stay open beyond 11 p.m. without issue and the property will be no different. Travelers on Interstate 93 travel at all hours throughout the night and day. And the gas station that's open 24 hours a day would be a benefit to all who drive by Tilton exits. The store will require an employee and more money will be spent in Tilton. Drivers and travelers stopping at the property late at night will not be a nuisance to the general public and shopping at the property can be done safely with proper lighting after 11 p.m. And uh, taking up one of the members' comments, we're happy to uh, go back to the client and talk to them what the, the standard protocol is for light reduction after a specific hour. I don't know if it's generally 11 or with gas stations, probably 1 a.m., maybe between the hours of 1 and 5 a.m. that there'd be a light reduction. I'd like to say what the percentage is. I just don't know what the, the proper one is, but I think there is a, a standard or a spec for it. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Any other questions right now? No, that was my only concern. All right, any public input? All right, we'll close public input and deliberate. I I would be interested to see what if there are any uh, anything associated with Irving, who's open 24 hours. I don't think that they... Right, that's... I mean, it is a commercial area there. That it, it isn't going to impact on any residents. Right, one of the things we always but talk about But we want to is... see if Irving, it would be nice to know if Irving had any restrictions. Yeah. Yeah. You think Irving is 24 hours? Oh, absolutely. Yeah. Oh, it is. Okay. And I want to say even Big Apple. Maybe 24 hours. Big yes. Apple is listed as 24 hours. Yes. They don't have to no. no, I guess that's my. my and I think right. Cumberland Farms used to be, and then during COVID, I think Brian, you said Correct. they they they're, went they're from 24 hours to. So uh, one thing we always talk about is how is it like uh, you know like things around it and the well, it's like, the character fit in with the. Like what happens with over at, um, you know, the outlet malls after 11, they tone their lights down. Mm -hmm. The whole thing should be toned down. Because Doesn't they're closed. It needs to be lit up. Crazy. It just needs to be lit up to a point where you can see where you're walking, see your surroundings. It doesn't need to look like the sun. It right. just needs to be safe. And so I think going forward again, you know, we're going to see more of this and we should, as a town, Think about it and protect ourselves. Yeah, you know, light pollution is a deal. Once it goes in, it's in. What's the mechanism for that here for us? Is that to, is it to default to planning? I know that like when we did Planet Honda, they had. Like, I say Planet Honda was lumens. a good example. Yeah. Right. Lumens. We talked about them, and they had to downlight to a certain number of lumens. Just... Which took some tweaking even afterwards for them to get that right, so they weren't. Sure. But I think right. we pushed it, pushed that value to planning, if right. I remember correctly, that that was kind of their purview. Right. Yeah, what makes engineering sense as far as safety? Like, we don't know how many rooms are needed, but it definitely should be looked at. Right, so I guess you're looking at the ordinance, which doesn't allow any, any light after 11. So if you were to rule to allow it, you can put a condition that uh, planning regulate the level. Mm -hmm. I think that's exactly uh, what we did. I think that's what you did with Honda, right? right. Um, uh, I don't know exactly if it stops at this gas station or if it's stopped. Well, I don't know where it's the exact bus stop is. It's that store, isn't it? Isn't it that store? I, yeah. I don't know. Oh. Is, is Concord Coach Lines, is the bus stop the store for you guys? Or is the is it the community center out back? I think it's the community center. I think center. it might be this. Another oh. building. Oh. Okay. I think it used to stop in the front there. I'm not sure in recent years, but I remember... It would pull into the gas station there. I don't, I don't know that there was a specific right, and they stop. You buy your tickets on it or whatever. They don't run at night. No. At their 11 anyway. Thank you. Yeah, so, you know, I, I hear what you're saying. Yeah. You know, we, we, we could approve the variance for the lighting and then have planning put a well, we have value. A yeah, we'll put a stipulation yeah. in now. Mm -hmm. That. That, that happens like planning regulates a level of lighting after 11. 11 yeah. yeah i think the i think the variance in itself is consistent with what exists in the yes area now. right mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, but i think you're right that, that we have to have a conversation as a town is what we want mm -hmm. as far as what that lighting looks like afterwards right. i just yeah i guess planning is probably the place for that mm -hmm. to put a value on how much light after 11 o'clock right. yep. yeah okay let's go through our five are you guys ready to go through the five mm -hmm. yeah yep <laughs> Granting the variance would not be contrary to the public interest. I, I agree with the statements that it's uh, 
it's a business that's going to be open. We, we can't say whether he's open 24 hours or not. And if he's going to be open, he right. probably ought to be that consistent with the area. Uh -huh. If the variants are granted, the spirit of the ordinance would be observed. Uh, there's no residential areas around it. I, again, I always fall back. What's the, what's the town like around the, the location we're talking about? And it's consistent with that. Um, granting the variance to do substantial justice. Again, it's his purview if he opens his business 24 hours or not. This allows him to do it safely. If the variants are granted, the values of the surrounding properties would not be diminished. It's consistent with all the properties around him. Unnecessary hardship, owing to a special condition of the property that distinguishes from other properties in the area, denial of the variance would result in unnecessary hardship because no unfair substantial relationship exists between the general public purpose of the ordinance provision and the specific application of that provision to the property because the proposed use is a reasonable one. Like, again, we're enforcing this literally on him, makes others around him who don't who are allowed to do it now. Not that, that necessarily is the only thing, but it also doesn't impose on any residents in the area. It's not a residential area at all. Mm -hmm. Agree with that. Cool. Any motions? There's a stipulation. Yeah, uh, I can. We can. We can write it out if we want here, um, or I can. I can make a motion, and you guys can. Nope. Uh, I propose we approve Article. Sorry, Zoning Board Case 23-01, Article 2, Section 2.4.4M. I thought it was 2.3. No. Nope. Oh, 2. sorry. 4. Sorry. Yeah, 2.4. Sorry. 4. M. Okay, Article 2, Section 2.4.4 M to allow parking lot signs on past 11 p.m. Uh, with approval from planning on lumens. <laughs> of lighting after, after 11, 11 p.m. Do I need to re-say that again? Yeah, you might want to clean that. Okay. Uh, I make a motion that we approve Zoning Board Case 23-01. Article 2, Section 2.4.4M, to allow parking lights on past 11 p.m. with approval of lumens from Planning Board for lighting past 11 p.m. Mm -hmm. I second that. Made and seconded. Any other discussion? No. Those in favor? Aye. 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 And the ayes have it. Right. Sorry, Round three. I no, no, no. I looking at the wrong. That's Round right. three. Round three. Ready to go? Yes. A variance is requested from Article 2, Section 2.3 of the ordinance, which restricts the total area of a sign in the RG district to 40 square feet. The applicant requests the variance to allow a 26 foot and 3 inch sign with an area of 134 square feet at 63 Laconia Road, the property. The property is located in the Regional Commercial District, the RG, as defined in the Tilton Zoning Ordinance. And in the RG, a sign may not be larger than 40 square feet. Currently, there is a sign that is 26 feet tall, should be 29 feet tall, and has an area of 151.2 square feet. The new sign will show the shell symbol, the store name, and the current gas prices, which is similar to the existing sign. The new sign will be in the same spot as the old sign, generally. Um, I think Chris had mentioned that they're going to move it a little bit to make it more conforming. Granting the variance will not be contrary to the public interest because a sign of the appropriate size showing where gas can be purchased as a benefit to the general public. The property is located in the RG in an area that is close to the highway. Laconia Road is a busy road with three lanes of traffic on both sides. Drivers who need gas must know where they are going, and the sign will help the traffic flow. The existing sign is larger than, than the new one, and there are no known issues with the current sign or complaints. The new sign will not cause a distraction because it's a standard gas station sign used at many gas stations throughout the state, and the sign will not obstruct vision of drivers or block surrounding businesses. The new sign will match the RG, and it will not change the overall aesthetic of the area because it is commercial. If the variance were granted, the spirit of the ordinance would be observed because the purpose and goals of the ordinance, particularly Section 2.3 signage, is to protect the health, safety, and welfare of the public by uh, reaching certain goals described. The new sign will not conflict with any of the stated goals. The new sign does not create a distraction because it's a standard gas station sign that does not obstruct the views of drivers who will benefit from a sign showing where a gas station is located. The existing sign is larger and has not had an effect on property values or civic beauty, uh, meaning a newer and smaller sign will not either. Overall, the new sign will blend in the surrounding area because the abutters are commercial and will likely benefit from customers visit visiting the property may then dine at their nearby restaurants or shop at their nearby stores. Uh, 
The ordinance is meant to limit signs that would negatively impact DRG and Tilton, and Tilton which this sign does not. Granting the variance would do substantial justice because substantial justice is measured by whether the harm to the applicant outweighs any gain to the general public if the variance is denied. The loss to the applicant in not approving the variance would far outweigh any benefit to the general public. Gas station requires a sign of appropriate size to help customers find the gas station and see it from a distance so they have ample time to be in the correct lane to turn into the gas station. If the sign could not be seen from far away, the customers may be unable to reach the gas station and end up driving by, or they may attempt to reach the gas station by cutting through multiple lanes. The new sign will help bring in customers to the property, and the sign will not block any views, obstruct sight lines, or block any abutting commercial properties. The old sign does not have the proper name, the convenience store, and is outdated. If the variants were granted, the values of the surrounding properties would not be diminished because the property currently has a similar sign that is larger than the new one, and it has not negatively affected the abutting properties. The abutters are commercial properties and signs uh, with signs to attract customers. The new sign will not block any of the abutters from the site of potential customers, and a large sign showing where a gas station is will attract potential customers to the area. Unnecessary hardship owing to special conditions of the property that distinguish it from other properties in the area. Denial of the urge would result in an unnecessary hardship because no unfair and substantial relationship exists between the general public purposes of the ordinance provision and the specific application of that provision to the property because the property, specifically the convenience store and gas pumps, is located in a spot where it is blocked by trees and other commercial buildings from sight angles of Laconia Road. The sign shows the location of the property from all angles. The property's location can make it difficult for customers to reach the property unless they know where it is with plenty of time and distance to enter the correct lane to turn. The sign showing customers where they can purchase gas can help customers find the property easier from a longer distance away. The purpose of the ordinance is to prevent signs that do not, do, do not fit in the district where they are placed and to avoid other issues such as blocking views and driver sight lines. The sign will match the area of the RG and will not block any views or sight lines of drivers. Customers of the surrounding business will be able to easily see the abutting businesses and safely enter and exit the area. And the proposed use is a reasonable one because the new sign is reasonable in the RG because it is replacing a larger sign and it fits well into the area while acting as a beacon for drivers who need gas. A driver, especially one running low on gas, needs to know where a gas station is early to ensure they can safely access the site. Conia Road is a busy road with more than one lane. Driver must be able to set, uh, safely switch lanes with enough time to enter the property. Gas stations across the, uh, the state of New Hampshire have similar signs and the applicant has installed similar signs at other gas stations without issue. Thank you. Thank you. Any questions for me? Uh, the old sign has, uh, I guess, a mechanism, for lack of a better word, for the other businesses to advertise on there. Is that going to stay, go away? Is that a, I don't know if that's a. <laughs> oh, yeah, sorry. That was my sorry. Uh, my understanding of the agreement is that they just have to provide ample notice to that tenant. I don't know exactly what that time frame is, but the owner is aware of it and plans to, but he didn't want to notify him in case the project didn't move forward. So sure. Um, so this is like basically rented space on the part of the other businesses. Correct. It's well, not, the only other business on the sign is Dunkin' Donuts. The other the other uh, tenant on the sign is Subway, which is their co-brand currently. Right. Um, they don't know in the future if it'll be Subway still or some other entity, um, but there is space on the sign for that co-brand tenant as well. Question I had. Any other public input? No? Any other questions for you guys? No. We'll close public comment and deliberate. No, they're bringing this sign smaller. It's from 26, uh, 29 to 26. It's, I think we should just make a condition lower. Lower. Yeah, that lower. they have to sell the gas for the rate they have on there. I saw that. I was like, really? <laughs> Does that to make me like it? <laughs> uh, it's, I mean, it's more conforming. <laughs> Than what was there? It's yes. Less in the setback. It's smaller. Uh, I have no issue with it. 
Nope. Okay, set back further, guys. All right. Uh, granting the variance would be not be contrary to the public interest. No, it is more conforming than what was there. And if mm -hmm. we don't grant it, then the less conforming sign stays. If the grant, variance are granted, the spirit of the ordinance would be observed. It is basically the same sign, just more conforming. I think it's moving more to the spirit of the ordinance. Mm -hmm. Granting the variance would do substantial justice. Same same thing. It's mm -hmm. basically the same sign, just more conforming. If the variance are granted, the values of the surrounding properties would not de be diminished. I don't believe so. Mm -hmm. There's no evidence to say that it would be. Mm -hmm. Uh, a necessary hardship owing to a special condition of the property that distinguishes from other properties in the area. The denial of variance would result in an unnecessary hardship because no fair and substantial relationship exists between the general public purposes of the ordinance provision and the specific application of that provision to the property. And the proposed use is a reasonable one. Again, if we literally enforced the provisions of this application, we would be keeping a less conforming sign. Okay. Any motions? I'll make the motion to... I'll make the motion to accept ZB 23-01, Article 2, Section 2.3, on the allow a 26-foot, 3-inch sign with an area of 134 square feet to replace the existing sign. I'll second it. Any discussion? No. no. Those in favor? Aye. Aye. Those opposed? The ayes have it. Thank you. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I could get some perfect. practice. Maybe <laughs> don't you just say it again. <laughs> All right. We are on to case 23 02, Ronald and Tina DeFossis. No, you can probably. You can go over out. there. Yeah. yeah, you can use Whichever the podium. Whichever one you want to stand on that one, whatever one works. Whatever. That way, you like better. Put your stuff down. Yeah. Yeah. So I am asking for a variance to have a 1989 trailer located in Gaslight Co-op instead of what the um, the condition that you guys have in the zoning board now, which is a 1995. Um, it would be the second newest trailer that's in there. There's only one other trailer that's newer than that in the in the Gaslight Co-op. Um, it would conform, you know, the building inspector would have to go out there and inspect it, and any changes that need to be made if it doesn't pass would obviously have to be, you know, done before I could possibly, you know, live there or whatever the whoever lives there. Um, it follows the five criteria of the zoning board, so I'm asking that you guys grant that variance for me that. We've talked about a few times now. <laughs> uh, we just have to have you read it into the record, the five criteria, and then sure. your, in your cases, basically read your application into the record. It's I don't have like it, it, so Leanne, oh, oh. if you do. Yep. And it's a 1988 mobile home, not a 1989, correct? Um, according. To, that's what you wrote. Oh, okay. I think according to HUD, it was an 89. I'm not really sure. On your application, it says 1988. Okay. It could be 88 built, made for the 89. I project. think that's what it is. I think inspected in 89, I guess, maybe. Um, so it says granting the variance would not be contrary to the public interest because obviously that there's, as I stated, every trailer in there is older except for one. That was the one that was put in with this last variance that they had. And that's a 2000. Um, if the variance were granted, the spirit of the ordinance would be observed because it's following the conformity and should be, it should be a conditional variance, which is how I, how I read the last meeting that we had that Leanne brought to your attention. When they said conditional, I thought that it had meant condition as in the condition of the trailer, you know, that the condition of the trailer should be, should be considered, not just the year, because, you know, if you, like they talked about, if you want to move a trailer, you know, if you want to upgrade it to a trailer, to a you know a 2000 what are you going to do with the other trailer if it's a 19 you know 75 you can't really do with anything with it in the town of Tilton because once you move it Tilton won't let you have it anymore 
And they're perfectly beautiful trailers that are 1970s, 1980s, 1990s, you know, so you're kind of losing opportunities for somebody else to have an affordable home, you know. Um, <clears throat> it says granting the variance would do substantial justice because it's a home that will be fully remodeled and guaranteed to pass all building standards. Again, before you get a CO, Chuck will have to um, inspect the whole thing, make sure that it does conform to whatever, to the standards as of today, not just 1995. If the variance were granted, the values of the surrounding properties would not be diminished. As I said, it would be the second newest trailer in there. And the only other trailer that's newer is the one that was the most recent one that was put in there, maybe a couple years ago or something like that. So, and it, it allows, they're trying, the park is trying to put more trailers in here so the rent doesn't go up for everybody else. So there's no abutters or anything that's, you know, that's against this because they want to keep their rents as low as they can. Um, move on to the next page, I guess. No fair and substantial relationship exists between the general public purposes of the ordinance provision and the specific application of that provision to the property because this is a co-op where 30 homes sit, 31, I guess, now at this point. 30. 30. I would be 31. Um, they were granted additional 10 units, which was reduced to six, I believe. Five. Five. <laughs> it went from 10, I'm sorry. Um, for me, I have a lot of money invested in this already. So we all know that I was granted the first appeal, which then was overturned. So when I was granted that first appeal, I started to move forward in the process. But it didn't quite work out that way. Um, the proposed use is a reasonable one because it meets the HUD standards. It brings income to the park. It is newer than 95% of the models in the park. I think it all goes back to the same thing. HUD has no 1995 standards. There's only two cities in the state of New Hampshire that have years put on in their zoning. Only two. No other city besides you and Londonderry that have any kind of stipulation as of the year. Um, explain how if the, the criteria is subparagraph are not established and thus unnecessary hardship will be deemed to exist and only if owing to special conditions of the property that distinguish it from other properties in the area. The property cannot be reasonably used in strict conformance with the ordinance and a variance is therefore necessary to enable a reasonable use of it. Um, again, as I talked, the variance is only due to the year of the home. Again, most of them are older. I think what it comes down to for me is the condition of the trailer. That's how I feel what it should go by. I know what the ordinance says, but it's going to be one of the nicest trailers, you know, up to date trailers in there. I'm sure they're, you know, very beautiful trailers, but the most up to date one. So it will only make the ones around. It's not going to diminish anybody's property. The abutters are for it. The park is for it. So hopefully you guys will grant me this. Any questions, Amy? I would say that, you know, in, in like maybe a remark to your remark of like Tilton, one of two towns that um, have a year on the RVs, I would say I came from a town that didn't allow any. So there is plenty did... of towns that have what we call snob laws that do <laughs> not allow RV parks at all. And and that might be true, but according oh, to Oh, no, the... it is true. No, no, I'm saying, but according to the ones that do. I'm, I agree. But so I'm saying there are towns out there that are far worse than Tilton. Oh, I, this wouldn't happen at all. This wasn't this I wasn't a, a mark against the no, town of Tilton I'm by just, any means. There for the town of Tilton. And then um, a, a, another thought is, and it is an interesting thought, when you say that you would be the second newest in the park, it kind of goes back to why the town of Tilton is saying there should be an age on these because once they do get placed, I would say they never get moved. And you're looking at uh, an inventory in your park that is getting quite old. And not knowing what is the life expectancy of a trailer, they must have one. I and also... eventually they would expire like any house. Like my house is is old and it requires a ton of maintenance. Right. And if but your house would never expire. Ignored, 
so, your, your house would never expire, though. I guess correct. maybe that's it, it's a little bit constructed different. But in the state of New Hampshire, in the state of New Hampshire, mobile home, manufactured home are considered real estate. They are considered no different than your home. A mobile home has a VIN number. So no. it, it's considered, I think, as it's a deeded. vehicle purchase. It doesn't have a VIN number. It's deeded. These are deeded. They don't have a VIN number they on do this not. at all. No, they do so not. So when you go sell it, it's not a transaction. It is through. absolutely not. It's deeded. Okay, it has to go through the county. It is considered real estate in the state of New Hampshire. Okay. I, uh, I don't. I'm uninformed on this. We're talking about, Ooh. but I would be. My knee-jerk reaction is that it absolutely is considered real estate in the sense of a sale transaction. Don't know that it's considered real estate in its construction standards. There's a um. I do it. Hold on. I, sure. I have one more question. Uh, in her application, uh, Leanne, it says the home uh, will be fully remodeled and guaranteed to pass all building standards. W what standard is it that it's held to at that point? All we have is a HUD standard, which I I'm not sure how. I guess if you had to, you would have to speak to Chuck about how he'd inspect it. So this wouldn't be like uh, building a home. Uh, you have the framing, and then they come and do a framing right. inspection, and they do a wiring inspection. Right. It when, doesn't follow that same standard. Correct. So when a new mobile home is placed, it comes in with a HUD standard, and then the only inspection that's done, done is for service hookups. Okay. <clears throat> okay. And and just one other question, um, Tina, is it two units that you have on there? That's not one big unit. That's one unit. It has chassis, the chassis, is it one solid chassis that runs the whole length of it? Okay. Yep, it's, uh, I want to say, 70 feet, 14 by 70. Uh, and the only other thing I'd like to, I think it, I think it owes a point of clarification, is we didn't uh, give you an approval of anything in, right. in our first. We agreed with the right. the interpretation of the right. of the ordinance at the time. Right. So we didn't give you any approval to nope. go do anything. No. Nope. We just uh, agreed with that absolutely. interpretation. I just wanted to clarify that. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, so my hang up on this is that in the application that they the park originally put in, this unit is sitting on the variance correct me if i'm wrong on this this unit's lot is one of the lots that is in the variance from 2014 i believe it was correct and mm -hmm. that is the variance that we were we are referencing on everything we've been using here where we took away from it that part of that variance was that they didn't want uh any stock that was you know older that, that met this time hmm. Can I can I address that issue? Yeah, yeah. I think that when I think that when I listened to the video, I think I outlined it in in the last. I wasn't allowed to speak in the last one, which is understandable. Um, I I remember me and Eric had a conversation that it said conditional, and you said, well, what would be a new condition? I think what they meant on that, and my takeaway, what what from was it that conditional meaning the condition of the trailer? Because the lady in the in the um, the lady in the public had asked that, you know, why would you make it? Why would you make a year on it? You know, there's plenty of beautiful trailers that are, you know, less than a 1995. And the gentleman said, we didn't know what to do, so we just put a number out there. And that's what was said in the meeting. I don't know if you guys got to watch that whole thing or just a portion of it, but that's literally what was said in there. That was one sentence, and then there was considerable more dialogue about, like, we really need to come up with a standard. Right. Uh, it should probably be 10 years. And then they went with the 95 at the time, because that was what the town ordinance was at the time. That's where they had hung up. So if we, if I could hear it clearly, it was, it was, it, is it, tough. Was, it yep. was tough to hear, mm -hmm. you know, with and it could be. Multiple replays for sure. Exactly. So. I'm gonna uh, I'm gonna lean it towards my way, Brian. <laughs> oh, of course, of course. That's yeah, that's of course. Um, so this is my hang-up here is 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 it's it's almost like a dual variance. It's a variance on top of a variance, and it's a variance on top of an expired variance. Which is next? Which is which is next? <laughs> she probably should have went first. Uh, mm. 
So I, I just... I mean, I'm on board with the idea that everything, you know, like I, it's some 1988 cars, not that it's a car, are in awesome condition and some mm-hmm. are in terrible condition. I, I, I almost wonder if it due diligence is to do a site visit. I don't know. I'm just... Mm-hmm. I'm sorry, I missed what you said. I, I, I site posed visit. to the group if a site, if the due diligence here would be to do a site visit. I, I can't speak to the condition of your unit. I, you know what I mean? I, I'm it's taking... not, but it's not completed. It, it needs to be completed. It needs, it. needs There's nothing done to it at this point because we haven't been able to, we, we didn't want to do anything without, you know, any kind of building permit. We're doing things, you know, we're trying to. I, I don't think we're saying that it would be up to um, living standards. What we're saying oh, okay. is we would go By all means. see it. Sure. See the condition of what you're trying sure. to bring in right now. Sure. Um, what you do in the future, we have very little control over. Sure. No. But what feel you're free. asking is a variance. Yes. From 95. Yes. To an bring in an 88, which is like at this point, it's 35 years old. Yep. And so the idea, and it would probably be in your best interest if sure. your trailer isn't actually the shape you're saying, if it's mm-hmm. like better than like a 95. Then uh, we would see it, and maybe our fears are, are alleviated sure. that we're not bringing in an older trailer that's not up to yeah, what the town of Tilton wants, which is feel free. 95 or newer. Sure. Because feel again, free. we all know that in, there it's going to be, and it's already 35 years old. I understood. Okay. I think that's my interpretation of all this stuff with the town is that. Um, Mobile homes are not looked at in the same way that houses are. They just are not, they're not inspected the same way. They are not interpreted the same way that houses are. And so in the interest of providing for certain housing stock, they tried to put a year on it. Mm. And uh, unfortunately, they should have put a a time back from today's date versus a a year date. That would make this much clearer is what the intent was. Mm -hmm. Um, Didn't float. No, it just yeah, this was not not done well, but it, it is what it is. Mistakes they happen. And the trailers that are already there will be handed in. Right, yeah, if it exists, yeah. it, it stays for sure. Yeah, they're it's still in the town. Um, so I I don't know, I don't know how you guys feel about that. I feel like given all of the moving pieces of this. Do you want to open up to the public too? There. Yeah, yeah, sure. Any public input? Yes, ma'am. Yeah, um, me and the chat is- Operations just gotta talk to into a mic. mic. We don't have the room mic anymore. I'd just like to clarify. Um, my home is in 1970, and it's in wonderful condition. And all the homes in the park, we take a lot of pride in our homes, and they're all in fantastic. We had one that was falling apart. The guy redid it. Um, they just every home is everybody's proud of their home, and um, it's a nice park. And these lots where it's going, oh, that's on my thing. Uh, it's 10,000 square feet, which the original park didn't have lots that big. And um, I will say the 19, the 2000 that's next to me is kind of falling apart. And that's a 2000 because the owner died and he was getting ready to do the floors over and they don't make them like they used to. And the floors are all punky and they're all falling down. And they don't use real wood in the paneling. I have real wood paneling. Just to say, a lot of things were better back then. And um, you said something else I was going to address, but I forget what it was. <laughs> yeah, I don't want you to think that we're not trying to attack the integrity of your park at all. We're not saying that. The you... beautiful park. We yeah. Did, we I... escaped it. We, the other thing is this: these lots came about because there was an old house on that lot. And we, we have over a million dollars in loans that we took out to do upgrade this, the water and the sewer and tear down the house and that's where we got the lots from so these lots are all 10,000 square feet the lots down back are like 5,000 the original grandfathered ones the other thing is this one already has a foundation under it if she can't keep that home there's a foundation in the corner that we can't do anything with because the foundations are made to fit the home oh, it's a slab. So, yeah, yeah, and, flat. I'm and, sorry. yeah, yeah. Flat I mean, to be fair, it's not our, you know, if people do things before they've checked all the boxes, all of right. the Right. Well, I had no boxes, idea. I, like, I'm sorry. I inherited this position. No, I, I, I'm not. They didn't tell me. I thought we had six. It, it's not meant to put blame on you, okay. ma'am, at all. It's just all right. to say that we can't really consider the fact that there's already a slab there. It, 
because it was the cart before the horse sort of thing. That's all I wanted to point oh, out. About. I thought you could because it would be a real hardship for us to have a slab sit in the corner. Don't use because we can't use it because they made to fit the hump. So it right. would be just a slab. In it the was a, it was a hardship that was self imposed because the paperwork you know the things weren't done in the okay. correct order. If that makes sense. I uh, guess okay. Uh, That's all. So and I think the thing here is that there are of course there are nice units that are older, but the 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 purpose of the variance to me is to account for inconsistency in manufacturing in in manufactured homes. Yeah, oh, yeah. every I mean, her case. You should exactly, go through the five criteria too, man. Exactly some that. Yeah, 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 we will. That was the other yeah, point I wanted to address. When a when a mobile home is manufactured, it has a HUD certification. Like you said, when you build a house, they come in and they inspect it as you go. That's what the HUD certification is. It means it was inspected every step of the way at the factory to make sure it was compliant. And that was passed in 1976. And it's got the placard. I, if it has that placard, it means it was inspected every step of manufacturing. For sure. We know. We're, 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 the hang up is that the town ordinance says you got to have a 95 well, HUD okay. stamp. And that doesn't exist. Well, we want a variance. Change. So we're asking you to give us a variance on that. Right, right, right. <laughs> right. And we're trying to apply the variance to the intents and all of the moving pieces there. You do know that on your on the Tilton website, there is an R, there are RSAs on your website about manufactured homes, correct? Uh, I feel like this is a leading question. It's so. not a leading question. <laughs> it, no, it, it, was, it wasn't a leading question at all. It, it, I'm just saying it helped. It, that's where it explains that it's real estate. Yes. And oh, it's, okay. I and see it's, what you're saying. it's on your website. All right. Okay. That was not a leading question. <laughs> <laughs> not not uh, at all. Um, I just thought maybe it would clarify. Oh, okay. All right. That makes sense. I, I, I feel like I would... I would feel better if we did a site visit. I feel like it would answer a lot of the subjective pieces of this, um, and and we could move forward on this this instance. I, if you guys don't feel the need, I am not going to be offended by any means. Just not where I, stand. I don't mind going. I don't, I don't mind going to site visit. Yeah, I we'll do a site visit. That before. Oops. I think we've done that before and have actually gained a lot of knowledge of a site. Mm -hmm. Yes. I yes. don't think. We've been there to a site once and been disappointed, like, oh, this means nothing. Right. I never we've seen, I think, what have we done? Two or three? And each one was worth it. Yeah. All right. I definitely think so. I welcome them to go. Okay. So, so we can't we can't force that upon you. That, no, I believe please that's do. a request oh. on us. No, absolutely. Have to, uh, that way you'll get a better of, you know, all the all of the older mobile homes are, you know, metal siding. Mine is vinyl. I have a metal roof on mine. You know what I mean? You, you'll see, I have brand new French doors, you know, front and back. You'll see, you know, the conformity that not only does it conform, but, yeah. you know, it right. it exceeds, you know what I mean? So would we like to look at some dates? Sure. Yeah. Yeah. Are there, is there a, a date that works well for you? Whatever works for you is is fine by me. I can, I can make arrangements. Wednesday of next week does not work for me. Wednesday of then next week. No Wednesday. No Wednesday. <laughs> or I won't be there. What Tuesday? Tuesday works. Uh, Tuesday does not work for me. Okay. That is the only day that does not work. Tuesday does not work. Monday does. Monday? Monday, I'm on on I'm, I'm at work, but I can drive up there. As long as you're not in the middle of some. Yeah. It would have to be after three o'clock for Whatever me time. because I get out of work at three and it's forty minute drive to home. So. What time do you want? Well, we want it when it's still light out, so it gets yeah, dark yeah. early. Yeah, there's no electricity <laughs> hooked up to it. So. I mean, four o'clock is fine with me. You, I, yeah, I'm more flexible usually than. I don't get home till four o'clock. Yeah, yeah, it's gonna be dark by the time I get home. Do we want four o'clock? Can you meet four o'clock on Monday? Oh yeah. All yeah. right, four o'clock Monday. Four o'clock Monday. Twenty-third. Four o'clock Monday. That gives us enough time to post it, right? Because we have to post it. Um. It's tech. It's a. All of us are. In the same place at the same time. Warm. Yeah. Today's. Uh... Can't be that soon, can it? 30th? Hey, just kidding. The 30th? 30th. Okay. You want to do a Monday? I can do the 26 or 27 too, whatever works for you guys. 30th. Where, okay. What's the cutoff day? Seven ish. Be next Tuesday. Well, next, no, it'll be next Wednesday. Next Wednesday. So Thursday, Friday, Monday of next week. Not Monday, but 26, 27, 30. 
I can't 26? do Friday. I work late. Yeah. Okay. I'm the 26th, which is a Thursday. Oh, me. Fine with me. When? Four o'clock. When? Four o'clock on the 26th Thursday. Okay. Does that work for you, ma'am? It does. Four o'clock. Okay. Yeah. Thank you very much. I appreciate it. Uh, we hold on. We have to make a oh. motion to table this, correct? I mean, you can go sit down. Yeah. 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 You can sit. Yeah. Sorry. Okay. Okay. Um. Can I do something like I make a motion to table ZB twenty three dash O two for a site visit on Thursday the twenty sixth yep. at four p.m. Yep. Yeah. And you're and you're tabling it to you said that. Date is uh, the next meeting. You have the date of it. Yeah, I do. It'd be you have it 21st. 221, 21. yeah. So it's 221? Yep. Okay. I make a motion to table ZB 23 02 for a site visit on Thursday, the 26th at 4 p.m. and to be reheard on February 21st. You didn't say January, you said the 26th. January 26th, yeah. January 26th, the yeah. site visit. Site visit. Didn't and I then, say that? No, you said the 26th. Oh. Instead of January I'll 26th. Start, oh, I'll no. start all over. <laughs> I'm just trying to, you know. <laughs> I make a motion my... to table ZB23-02 mm -hmm. for a site visit to be held on Thursday, January 26th at 4 p.m. And then the case to be later heard in February the 21st. The next regular meeting. Next the, regular next, meeting. the next regular meeting. I'll second that motion. Okay, made and seconded. Any discussion about it? No. We'll go to the dates. Yep. Those in favor? Aye. 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 Let's have it. All right. We will see you on the 26th. Thursday. Thursday, Thursday the, 26th. the 26th, 4 p.m. Next, next Thursday. Next Thursday. Uh, okay. Next case. Uh, I lost my agenda. 23-03, Gaslight Village. Okay, thank you all, Romy. Mira Shepard, Operations Manager for Gaslight Village Co-op. Um, do you want me to read it? Yes, if it will. Yep. Um, section 1, variance is requested from Article 3, Section 8.2.3 of the Zoning Ordinance to permit, yeah, to permit a total of 35 units within the Gaslight Village Co-op manufactured housing. Granting the variance would not be contrary to the public interest because uh, allowing additional units would provide the town with affordable housing units that are well planned and owner occupied. If the variance were granted, the spirit of the ordinance would be reserved because the housing density of 35 units on a nine acre parcel is less dense than the zoning requirement of 30 units on a six acre parcel. Each of these lots are 10,000 square feet, which is bigger than the existing lots. Um, granting the variance would do substantial justice because this is an extension of the variance granted on April 9th, 2017, as a typo, which expired on April 19th, 2022. We need to generate additional income to pay the bills and maintain infrastructure, the upgrading of which has incurred substantial debt. That's well over a million dollars we owe. If the variance were granted, and that's for 30 families. <laughs> If the variance were granted, the values of the surrounding properties would not be diminished because the use is consistent with existing uses. The landscape buffer has been maintained to screen out development from neighbors in the state highway. Additional housing could increase business for adjacent commercial properties. Unnecessary hardship. Uh, no fair and substantial relationship exists between the general public purposes of the ordinance provision and the specific application of that provision to the property be because the use is consistent with the overall use of the property as a residential development and does not exceed the density of housing that the zoning ordinance is intended to preserve. And also, all of our units are owner-occupied. There's no leasing, no renting, nothing. The proposed use is a reasonable one because the use is consistent with the neighborhood, Landscape screening provides buffers from the roadway and the neighbors. Additional residential units offer the co-op a way to raise necessary funds to support our community and pay down our substantial loans from the USDA and Community Loan Fund that we use to upgrade the water and sewer in the road. 
explain how if the criteria in sub is sub in sub I don't know are not established an unnecessary hardship will be deemed to exist and if the I don't understand all that and only if owing to special conditions of the property to distinguish it from other properties in the area the property cannot reasonably be used in strict conformance with the ordinance and a variance is therefore necessary to enable reasonable use of it. This application is requesting extension of the variance granted on 4-19-17. One lot has been filled and efforts are underway to fill the remaining four lots to replace the income previously generated through commercial leasing. Any questions? I don't know if you've gone by Gaslight Village Co-op. Is any of you? If you go by, I mean, you could see from the road, from Laconia Road, to where the houses start, it's all open. It's all field. So we're way back from the road. And these units would be on the road way back. So they're still way far away from the road. Just, I, I think I said to I'll put a map with it. With these are, they're abutting, uh, I shouldn't say abutting, but they, they front Laconia Road, right? They, no, they're back, no. but they're along Laconia Road? They're no, well, the address is Gaslight Road. They're um the back of that between Laconia Road and they where they front be. On they don't they don't front it. I mean they are between the where the park exists and now road, yeah. and Laconia Road. Right. Yeah. Okay. There's a berm there though, and um, there's a little wetland spot. So the distance is is pretty significant from the road. All well, all four additional because we got one filled. That's the one when you go in. It's on the left. That was the first one that got filled. And then I've been running around trying to fill six lots since I took this position and I found out that it's only five. So and they didn't tell me anything. <laughs> uh all right. So that, I guess that was your your map has six. Yeah, didn't I cross out the other one? There's two crossed out. Um let me look at it. There's the first one on the left as you come in, and then it looks like the second. Okay, that's one because that's already taken. Okay. And then the first one on the right is crossed out. We didn't want to rent that anyway. <laughs> it's below the berm because we have all that land there and we're hoping to do something better with it. The house is gone. Is that on the map you have? Uh, it looks like there's a, a lot over the house. Yeah, they, they show and the house has been gone since 2018. So which which five lots are the lots that are it's, being requested? Um, with, on the road, when you go in and you go the road to the right, Right from Laconia Road, you go in and yep. then you go right. Those are the lots. It's one, two, three, four. It's four lots. I'm sorry. There's only four there because we look. The one on the left is lot one. And then where the house is, is one next to that. And then the two on the end, where Tina's is, is down the far right. It says lot six. Okay, so the per for the purpose of this variance in this map, you're, you lot four is not included in this. No. You do not want to, no. Okay, so you're asking included. for the five that kind of run along the road here. Right, that's it. We're asking for the lots um, two. Four. I think this lot is included. Two, okay. three, five, and six. Yeah. Two, three, five, and six. That's it, yeah. Uh -huh. Four so lots. So you are requesting lot one. Yeah, that's her. Lot one's history. filled. There's a house there. You guys have been, we've been taxed on these as though there's trailers there since we got the variance. We've got wow. taxes on those like they're there. Lot one is the woman that just came before you, didn't she? No, no. she's oh, lot she's six. She's lot six. Okay. Lot, six. lot yeah, one was Dwayne and he died. That's the 2000. Yeah. Uh, so uh, I guess I don't understand yeah. this, Leanne. So do they need a variance for lot one? No. So we had it. That was under the old variance. Sorry. Okay. Okay. So, so she's asking a variance for what lots? I'm asking for a continuance of the original oh, variance. I'm sorry. That's what I'm asking. Mm. So they initially got a variance for six lots. Okay. The condition that the zoning board at the time put on that was five years to expire. Right. So they've only exercised one lot, which is lot one. That one's in. So if they want to continue to have the variance for these lots, they need a new variance because that has expired now because they haven't put in those units. So, so I think the zoning today, board. She needs four. Lots. Well, she needs five, but they're saying, but she's only asking for four. Yeah, if we you need were to, four more. The original was only for five. 
I, I looked at it, I was like, oh, okay, it's five. I'm trying to feel sick. If she wants four, they're asking for four, whatever Not she's four. asked for now. So it's almost like a new variant. So you don't really look at it like the old one. She needs a new variant. Her variant is expired. It's like anything you have. If it's expired, it's gone. Right. She doesn't have a variance anymore. Right, right. That unit is there. Obviously, that's grandfathered. Okay, so, so that's just what I'm saying is we don't need to grant five in order for that lot to continue to exist. Right, you do not. We, need to grant we do not. So four. she's right because it's expired. So then you're not going to kick that that trailer out, obviously. So now she needs a variance. Okay. So she's looking for a variance for four lots. She's saying she doesn't want lot four anymore. So she wants lot two, oh, lot okay. two, I three, lot five, five, and, and six. six. So she should. I mean, she said five on here. So, but she's looking for a variance for four yeah. lots additional lots on Gaslight Village where 30 are allowed and she has 31, right? 31 because you have this one new lot. I have 30. Right. Okay, okay. It was 29. Oh, okay. So and you have 29. Was, now I have 30. Okay. I said that wrong too. I thought it was 30. It was 29 and now I have 30. We have. Okay. I'm number eight on that, by the way. <laughs> I just think that we're, as we make our motions on this, we just mm -hmm. have to have our wording. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But clear right. right yes right so the previous board for whatever reason found it necessary to add certain conditions one of which as you already talked about was the year that they put on they also added an expiration date on the variance for whatever reason they discussed they thought that was important that these didn't sit open forever um yeah okay we right now we have the um roc which is the resident owned community um, we had somebody come to our last board meeting and he's interested in marketing and getting the lots filled for us. So we get it done fast this time. Owner occupied Hopefully. might be something you want to consider. And again, if you look mm -hmm. at the size of the other lots yeah, on this map. Mm -hmm. I mean, I saw what this one, but you don't have to go back. You should no, talk no, into the mic, though, Eric, yeah, if you're talking to so the public we, oh. can hear you. Oh. And just yeah, no, okay. we want to make sure we're clear on you're this. Clearer and, uh, than and past and motions. Mm -hmm. so. Yes. Yep. Based on if we're going to put a year on it, let's oh, state what it is. And, and then go through the criteria and ask for a public. I, yeah. this is okay. Be my next step with the public. Okay. No, yeah. just hanging out. All right. <laughs> Your name is right. Fun. <laughs> yeah. Um. Okay. Uh, are we done with questions? We want to close well, public comment here. I do here? want a question because it, it did kind of come up. Um. At one point in time, an elderly gentleman came here with an RV, not a mobile home, that he wanted to put in your park. Yeah, is that still RV still currently sitting she in your park? She sold that last week. It's been parked there. They haven't done anything. They, they knew it had to go. We knew it had to go. It got to be December. All right, this all happened in November. Um, she's aware of it. I just threatened to start charging her rent. And she got it. She sold it last week. The gentleman that bought it called me and asked me for one to two weeks grace to get it out of there. He's got a place to move it and everything. It'll be gone within two weeks. It's just packed. Right. Well, you know what I'm thinking right now, right? No. Yeah, well, I'm looking at a, a trailer that came to us a long ago that is still there. That was November. Now it's, you know, it's a month and it's winter. It's hard to move these things in the winter. This hasn't been much of a winter. <laughs> no, I know. I'll give you that. Okay, it hasn't. Thanks. It's been beautiful. Oh, I, you know, you know, what? Uh, now, you know what I'm thinking? Like, I would like if you are looking for us that you are doing and staying with good grace as far as like we're allowing you to have these extra lots that you are not allowing trailers that have been denied to reside still on your property. Yeah, that it's maybe just in the packed future. there, though. It's not nothing's been done. It's just packed like like packing an RV. You know what I mean? It was just I do. And that's space. not. Yeah, I, I just didn't make it too much of it. I got a letter from Leanne saying we had 30 days to get it out of there. Right, that so was up on the 14th, I believe. Um, I didn't even let you know that she did sell it. I spoke to the gentleman that's buying it. She sold it just the other day. She sold it a loss just to get rid of it. And he said he'll have it out of there within two weeks. So there's not much, you know, Mark, he's got to get his permits and, and get it moved. In fact, he's having Rusty's college move it, he told me. What's Make it a condition. Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and um, <laughs> do we need to come visit Tina's? It'll be going. Do we need to clarify? There's so many numbers going around here. Size um, of the park itself. Is it 31 plus four? I, that is one of the things I want to make sure. We... It's 30 right now. Plus four. How many total lots 
are you asking for in the park? Four more. Oh, oh. 34. 34 total. 34 lots. total. Okay. The ordinance says 30. We want 34. You're because in this it's asking for 35. Did I screw up again? Well, you you already have lot one. Well, yeah, I already have which is made it 30. 30. She said. And then four more would make 34. So yeah, make sure in your motion four. you put how many? I had it in okay, my head just, that yeah. it was three for one kind of snow. Yeah, no worries. We're just yep. Yeah, you're right. Just so it so, dot nine. so it went from 29 to 30 with lot one. And now, we and now she's looking for four more. Right. Yeah. So it's 34. Yeah. yeah. And again, we we hopefully fill them pretty fast with legitimate homes. It don't need variances. <laughs> um, are you all ready to close public comment and deliberate? Mm -hmm. yep. Yeah. Yeah. All right. We will close public Did comment. No, they're just hanging out. Oh, they're a butters. Hanging out. They're a butters. <laughs> when we right. spend a Tuesday night. <laughs> ah. Did um, you get a notice? So I, in general, I, I, I think that. that this is good for the community in the sense that allowing for a more affordable housing is something our community needs. Yes. I think that I agree. In I general, agree. there's the space on this lot that that allows for it, uh, and and our community know it needs more housing. I just think we have to be to prevent heartache in the future. Mm. We should be pretty clear, clear on the, in our in our proceedings going forward here. on the wording. Um. I don't know. Yeah. Just thoughts there. Mm -hmm. I agree. Uh, I feel like it would be best for us to come up with our wording and then move through the criteria. You guys like that? Or do you want to go through the criteria and then come up with our wording? Go through the criteria, come up with the wording. Okay. You know, just, like just roll yeah. through the. Yep. Okay. Uh, granting the variance would not be contrary to the public interest. Uh, I, I agree with their their statement here that providing more housing units, affordable housing units to the town that are well planned out and owner occupied is certainly in the interest of our community. Uh, if the variance were granted, the spirit of the ordinance would be observed. This is not a significant increase in the size of of the uh, park and our limit. I think our limit's 30, if I remember correctly. Mm. It's 30 on a six acre. We would have 30. 30, is, 30 is the limit in the ordinance. Yeah. Uh, the lots are not, you know, the lots are kind of larger. They're actually the same size lots as they built in uh, Rolling Hills, mm -hmm. if that helps anyone with their oh, perspective. Yeah. Um, granting the variance to do substantial justice. Again, I think it, it does, it gives justice to the park by allowing itself to expand and, and, you know, take care of itself a little better. And there certainly is no injustice in the community, given that they have the space to do it. Mm -hmm. They're cramming them in there. Yeah. Uh, if the variants are granted, the values of the surrounding properties should not be diminished. There's no evidence that shows that the mm -hmm. property would, the values would be diminished. Owing to a special condition of the property that distinguishes it from other properties in the area, denial of the variance result in unnecessary hardship because no fair and substantial relationship exists between the general public purpose of the ordinance provision and the specific application of that provision to the property and the proposed use is a reasonable one. Uh, my interpretation of the purpose of the ordinance is to make sure that you know, the parks are not, um, what's the word I'm looking for here? Crowded? Congested. That the, there's mm. a certain amount of space in the lot, you know, just like any sort of housing development, mm -hmm. that it's reasonably spaced out. Who, who does that criteria on the spacing? Is it planning? I would imagine it comes from planning. I, they do have a plan, yeah. right, thank you. which is what it's in the packet. Okay, thank you. Um, and again, these lots that they're putting houses on are... are sizes that we've deemed appropriate for full-size homes. I, mm -hmm. I think that this particular project is reasonable. Mm -hmm. Everybody on board with that? Yep. And the proposed use is a reasonable one. It is reasonable to put four more units in a mm -hmm. trailer park. Yep. Any stabs at wording this? <laughs> Well, just one, just start with what your conditions are and discuss those, how you want to word the conditions, and then go back to your okay. motion. I think that given the zoning articles coming down, the pike in the community, the inconsistency in what exists, we need to put a manufacturer window or a, a year, a number of years from today's date would be the reasonable thing to do. I feel like we probably would be correct to put an asterisk next to the cases that are pending, would that not be the incorrect thing to do? Like if we if we do this here and we have an open case. 
Right, this wouldn't affect the case. The case that are, is open and existing. We get Correct. the variance, I would specify in the infill agreement that it has to be 95 under one. I would put that. No, it's that not, up to, not, it's not up to her. That might not be the condition we come up with here. Want to go with an app? You're right. not discussing here. We're probably not going to choose a date. My, my Correct. Feeling is not a year, date, we're gonna but a year. It, it's X number of years from this current year. From the calendar. So it, How are you going to figure it? Though? I mean, you think about 10 years, it's like they'd have to buy a new one. They'd have to buy one that was 10 years old? Yeah. That's like, that's that really, I don't know, that really limits the options. I'm thinking, well, hold on, hold on. Where did, where... Well, that's what your new ordinance is going to say if it passes. So. Right. What's that? The new ordinance is being proposed at 10 years. So. Right. The, right. the new ordinance coming from the town is at 10 years. 10 now, years. It is obviously open new to whether or not ordinance? it. No, no, no. It's being proposed. It's going to the voters. Ah, it's obviously. Wow. It's obviously open in the air because it hasn't been accepted yet. Correct. Uh, but we could still do it to this variance. We can still apply it to this variance. Right. And I still believe that there was, it was not unclear to me what the board at that time wanted. They mm -hmm. wanted to set a certain number of, a certain Ten manufacturer years. amount. Uh, it's just not fair for people. It's, you know, it's really limits you know I'll, I'll, it's fine i'll take it whatever whatever it takes you know uh, it just it just seems so unfair with the you know the way prices are going up and the way the economy is right now that that's just really not fair <laughs> i mean our rent's 450 a month we're not looking to get millionaires in there you know for sure we're this is always a balance safety. between safety, uh fire. helping the community Helping maintain what the community as a whole has asked for, Correct. and helping individual projects know, but achieve again, their goals. Nineteen seventy, and there's nothing unsafe about it. Uh, real it, it, yep. That's anecdotal in the sense that yeah, that's awesome. You've done a good job taking yours. So has everybody else. Sort of but someone may bring in something that isn't, and then we wouldn't let him because we're also uh, the, mm -hmm. the town can't control. <laughs> but but now there's no like right. you may not let him in, but maybe you're all done tomorrow and someone else takes over for you, yeah. and they say I don't care, bring anything in, and <laughs> they bring in something that's fire just... trap, and it <laughs> and it catches fire and it burns the whole park down. Right. Exactly. Yeah. And then okay. we didn't do our diligence as a community to maintain that standard that that we were asking. Well, we do it as, in our community ourselves. So yeah, whatever you got to do. Things change. Let us fill the lots. I guess is all I really want. So ninety five would be a. Uh... Like twenty seven years. We don't want to go probably that much. If we if we went with the original um variance that passed and they kind of tied it to ninety five. Correct. I was thinking any trailer introduced or slash move to the park could yeah, not be older than we could say ten years that's future from the calendar year. All right. Can you go twenty? No. From the calendar year or the date of installation. It would be manufactured. Manufactured so from the calendar from the date of manufacture of the trailer to the calendar year present, so it'll keep moving. We'll I have to choose like an installation date, like I think whenever it is, when the permit is issued. Contract, so you could do it by the contract date. When the permit is issued. Yeah, I mean, and that way you never run into this issue mm -hmm. at all. It'll just keep floating and prevent someone. From well, what's the wording in the ordinance? Very Ten old years. Ah, uh, proposed ordinance. Proposed ordinance. Oh boy. Okay. We're going to delete this one, just the word the current, on the, the current one or the proposed one? The proposed one with 10 years. What, how is it worded? Uh, 8.1 manufactured home. It is the intent of this ordinance to offer reasonable opportunities for the installation of manufactured housing in accordance with the provisions of RSA 674 colon 32 and RSA 205 D modular housing and other pre, pre site built housing as defined in this ordinance are not subject to this section. Only manufactured homes manufactured in accordance with the National Mobile Home Construction and Safety Standard Act of 1974 as amended and manufactured 10 years of their placement in the town of Tilton or relocated within the town shall be permitted in the town of Tilton. All manufactured homes shall have, must have a HUD certification. All manufactured homes installed in the town of Tilton must first receive a building permit from the building inspector prior to relocation or installation. All permanent manufactured housing shall be placed on a permanent concrete slab or foundation. Design and construction of the slab or permanent foundation shall comply with current building codes. Normal maintenance and repairs of such manufactured homes shall be permitted, provided that no structural alter alterations are made to the primary structure. 
uh, manufactured home storage. No unoccupied manufactured home shall be stored or exhibited for sale and eventual removal within a manufactured home park or subdivision or in any residence district. This does not apply to existing manufactured homes sold on their existing foundation or slab. A manufactured home may be occupied as a temporary residence during construction on a lot for which a building permit has been issued, and a manufactured home may be used as a temporary office incidental to construction on or development of a premise on which the manufactured home is located for a period of one year. I think you're looking for 8-1-1. Yes. Yes. Okay. Mm -hmm. You could have cut me off and told me to stop. <laughs> <laughs> you're all aware of what the proposal is. <laughs> I think that's what we're looking to add. Yeah, and that's uh, what is proposed 10 year. Yes. Ah, uh, I mean, I, I like it's so good. to, to, uh, to me the uh, the year is semi arbitrary. Uh, I don't have a, I don't have a, I, I can't say how the town came up with 10 years. 10 years seems reasonable to me. Uh, I think the idea that's from planning board. That's from planning board. No, this is for your variance. So if that gets voted down, it still stays for your variance. Now, I would say that I think the idea is exactly what she was saying. She's saying there's a trailer right next to her that's 2000 built and it's already fallen apart. Mm. So if you're saying the new construction is worse, then we definitely don't want older in there. And then I definitely would not like to see something like, again, like a 1985 that's already old. I mean, uh, it's a classic. I mean, what are we going to let antiques in? No one's had cardboard walls. So, I mean, I, I think to avoid it in the future, I think we adopt it. Yeah, I, I mean, it's consistent with the direction the town is going in. Right. It's, it's really what it comes down to. And I, it, it's, not a, it's not a hit on any individual trailer. It's just a hit on the I, generally... No, I think it's important that anyone trying to move a trailer to a park has a very clear view of exactly what they're getting into. And you can't say that, you know, if you didn't do your due diligence, well, then shame on you. If it's this clear that it can't be over 10 years and you try to bring it in anyway and do all the site work, uh, you should have done. And at the park should be very clear. That's what, what happened. That's what happened with that other case. And, and, but if we do make it 10 year, the owner could come for a variance. Could. Could. Yeah. Could. Yes. Yes. There's nothing saying you can. And then we could do it and see the condition of it or concern. whatever. Yes. So just because we make a 10 year doesn't mean someone can't apply. Well, it, it makes it clear. It, it's got to be clear on your end also. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, that's an important point that if you there are the if there are these cases where there's this, un, you know, well meticulously maintained trailer, uh, they just need to have a variance. And yeah, maybe it was never used. Mm -hmm. And yeah, maybe it was never used. It sat on a warehouse yeah. somewhere. Yeah. 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 yeah, who knows? But they could come for a variance. The, in, the, the, just the, it, it just it makes sense. The monster of it. Right. Um, so I think are we in agreement 10 year? Yep. I think it's yeah. consistent. With it. Yeah, That's and I think part. it should be like read in exactly what whoever wrote this did a nice job of um, 8 1 1. That should be read in, and that is the stipulation for the year. I think it's written well. Yeah, yeah. It is not, it I is can't nothing, write it better than that. Yeah, it's not vague. Okay. Um, yeah, because before they relocated the trailer, they should have did, checked with this ordinance. Did correct? you want to put a time on this like the other people did? Uh, yes. Idea. What, what yes. do you think? Uh, I don't. I was thinking yes, but I don't. I don't. I don't know what the. Why were they thinking five year on the last variance? I, I never. It was a tough meeting to hear. I never heard the discourse on why. Why they need. You want them to come back every five years? Not you're putting in. Only if they haven't. Only if they haven't exercised it. So I guess. I mean, it was good. It came back to you, right? So. Yeah. Yeah. I think they just were thinking if it's not exercised then they should come back because maybe because they wanted to put new conditions i don't know so if, if we put uh a five year on it and they occupy two of them they need to come back with the three others or two, or others. two, two others or whatever two. it is right. uh, mm -hmm. two others that's right because it's four not five mm -hmm. uh, but the date will have to change because that's a rolling date right, yes. right. that's right that's right set in stone 
I, I, I mean, I can't argue one way or the other on that. I just want to do that. Okay. Um, okay. Let's uh, make a motion to approve. To approve uh, ZB 2304-03-03. Article 8. request from the variance from Article 8-2-3. To allow 35. What's well, going to be 34? 34, 34, 34 units. A total of 34 units. Within the Gaslight Village co op. Do we, uh, sorry, I don't mean to cut you off. I just, right. do we want to clarify. Oh, no, we'll add this. that with the following stipulation. No, this this part that this unit is not. Uh, unit one? Do, do we, I mean, I don't know, do we care that we want to make sure that this. That will be a variance anyway. Unit one is already there. The variance Not is for one. I'm four. I'm about unit six. lot four. Lot 16. Do we have to do yeah, anything for that? Like, yeah. we haven't approved that. Do we have Which one? Uh, the the, the FOSSIS one? Go, one? Yeah. The one we're going to the site visit. There's a slab there, so that's fine. That You're still approving those four additional lots. You okay. can okay. Do we name the four lots? Well, I, I, I'm actually not talking about the previous okay. case. I'm talking about lot four on this map. Do no, we... No. I know you don't. I, we just have to make sure that we, you, maybe you quit tomorrow and someone else comes in and they're like, oh, I don't want to use lot three. I want to use lot four on this map. We just have to concrete it in what we're saying. Why don't you so, list the lots in your motion yes. for the plan and we'll attach the plan to the variance. Yes. I agree. I agree. Yes. So we're going to approve uh, a total of 34 four. lots yep. within the Gaslight Village Co-op. Consisting of lot, lot number. Two, lot number two. With the addition of four lots to be. Lots two, two, three, three, three five, five, and six. six. Okay. With the following conditions. With the following conditions. And then I'll read that. Then you can read in yeah. 8-1-1. And. Mm -hmm. Oh, you could also. Like. I don't know. Oh. Uh, I don't, I mean. Could you put in as a stipulation kind of the protecting from like the that RV that's sitting there? Well, this protects. No occupied trailers are allowed. This, well, or this. The relocation in the audience protects it. With a condition it? that the they, the park come into conformity with existing non-conforming units. Okay. Yeah. Right. Did you catch that? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> with the following conditions, that and and the park, what? The park will come into conformity conformance. with regard the to any existing non-conforming, non-allowed or, or dis uh, uh, unapproved. Oh yeah. Yeah, because this can't start like being right because they're gonna. Yeah. Because you know what, if you deny the poses, is that going to sit there forever? Right, right, right. 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 I'm uh, never going to get that out of there. Yeah. Unapproved lots, is that what we're saying? Unapproved. On any unapproved and units. And the units. conforms to any existing unapproved units? Yes. <laughs> okay. Okay, so. What's that? Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yep. Okay. And then do we want to put a date that, you know, any lot that's. Yeah. I don't know. Does it. I think it's important. Yeah, it's got to be owner occupied. But who's going to police it? Yeah. You know, but it, it's interesting. But the ones in the future. I mean, she wants the variance. <laughs> yeah. But if your if your whole interest is to provide low income housing for local people, then why? Yeah. It's, yeah. Right. 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 It's not a apartment. Right. Apartment complex. It's. Um. Is it? But it seems like it's part. It says right, it in the, right, in the application. Right, right. But, um, um, it just makes it. Okay, this has become a paragraph. Um, <laughs> the one we did before this, is that lot part of the variance? It is, yeah. yeah. 
put the name on it. Oh, <laughs> dang. Uh, okay. All right. All right. Hold on. All right. So we're going to make a motion to approve right. zoning board case 20-23-03, Article 8, yada, 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 for a total of 34 lots, the lots being 2, 3, 5, and 6, with the following conditions. Yes. Lots are owner-occupied. Yep. Yep. Homes are owner-occupied. Homes are owner-occupied, yeah. And then slide that 8-1-1 in. Yep. Uh, 8-1-1, mm -hmm. and the park conforms any existing lots, any existing no unapproved violations. lots. No violations for any, any existing lots. Unapproved lots. Or units. And no or units. No, yeah, no violations. violations. Yeah. Do any existing unapproved lots, right? Yeah. Okay. All right. And then last, do we want to put a date? On this, like they had a date. Oh, this variance will expire on all unused lots. Variance expires five years. Five, five years. years. And that way we can take a look at it and see what's going on. Five years. Which was part of the last one that they got. Mm -hmm. So that's nothing new. From the date of approval. Okay. I'm going to read this. All right, guys, go for it. Are you guys Let's ready see. for a motion? Yep. Yes. Mary, yes. listen, Mary. We're gonna do the. We're making our motion here. Yeah. Yeah. Just list. Just so listen. Listen. Okay. Yeah. Right. Uh, all right. I make a motion that we approve zoning board case 23-03, Article 8, 2-2.3, for a total of 34 lots in the Gaslight Village Trailer Park, including lots two, three, five, and six, with the following conditions: the homes are owner occupied. Mm -hmm. The only manufactured homes manufactured in accordance with the National Mobile Home Construction and Safety Standards Act of 1974, as amended and manufactured 10 years of their placement in the town of Tilton or relocation within the town should be permitted. Uh, any unapproved existing locks will have no violations and the variance will expire five years from the date of approval. You might want to take a watch your C1. Those numbers that were given by the... Oh, phone right here. She's referencing this. That map? That's not a town map. That's my map. Aha. Uh -huh. Okay. Um, as referenced on map C1. Yeah. I think it's C1. It is. You are right. Yeah. yeah. Yep. Uh, good catch. That is a good catch. Am I set? Okay. Um, do I need to reread this now? <laughs> no, you're good with that little edit? Okay. Uh, okay. Made... I Any second seconds? that. Okay. Any further discussion? Oh. No. Okay. We will vote. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. The ayes have it. Thank you for coming in. There you go. Thanks. We gotta do uh we gotta do minutes. Oh. And I guess I'm guessing we have to do this. I don't imagine we have to make a statement. No, do we have to? Thank you. I'll get the other day, right? What's that again? So your uh, units are they're already owner occupied probably. I think that's what she said. It says it in her application. Well, huh? What's that? No, well, she says it was owner. -occupied. You know, it says right here units will provide the town with affordable housing units that are well planned and owner occupied. So I'm guessing it's probably a condition of the bill. Oh, but ask, but... So what do we have to do? Approve. We have this? to do approve the minutes. minutes. I think. All right. I make a motion to approve the minutes, zoning board minutes of November fifteenth, two thousand and twenty-two. I okay. second that. Made and seconded. Any discussion? No. Those in favor? Aye. 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 That passes. Someone want to do December 6th? Uh, I don't know how right. I make a I make a motion the zoning board uh, approve the minutes of December 6, 2022. I'll second it. Made and seconded. Any discussion? No. Those in favor? Aye. 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 Minutes pass. Any motion to adjourn the meeting? I just included the two amendments. We got to shut that off. Well, we're still no nope. still meeting. That we did, so you're aware. And uh, I guess I could have sent them to you before we had our first public hearing. We have another public hearing next week on them. If you have anything you want to add to it, um, and then they'll go on the ballot. Okay. All right. Motion to adjourn. I do a lot. I make a motion to adjourn.
Seconded. Made and seconded. Those in favor? Aye. 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 Meeting is adjourned.